12 days of Christmas, 12 signs of Jesus in the Old Testament. Sign number nine, King David and the sign of suffering. Let's go bold. I'm Scott Patton. Thank you all for joining us today for the Go Bowl podcast. We're so honored that, and humbled that you joined us today. Please hit that uh, like uh, and subscription on our YouTube channel, uh, and also give us a comment. We'd sure appreciate it. Now, I want you to look today. We're going to look today uh, on our sign. Uh, it's going to be King David in the book of Psalms, chapter 22 specifically. And I think when you look in the book of Psalms, you get some really prophetic, cool things that, that, that really kind of give us some, some tremendous signs. But in the book of Psalms, it gives us one of the most prophetic insights, I believe, uh, of the coming of Jesus and especially uh, the crucifixion and so much. We're going to dedicate the next two podcasts just to Psalms 22 and to look at the, the signs of Jesus because there's, you're going to see two major themes here. The greatest crisis of uh, the greatest cries of suffering in all of human history came right before Jesus died on the cross and ascended into heaven. Now you are going to investigate that, but well, what I want you to know though, though, is David, okay, uh, had this exact same prayer in Psalms, and and we're going to look at that today. And this is not the first time you've heard these words that Jesus talked about um, before he ascended into heaven. But we're going to start in the book of Matthew today, and not in Psalms 22 where we saw the where we saw the sign. In Matthew's gospel, it tells us the story of the last moments of Jesus' life on here on earth. Now, if you look at that picture of Jesus dying on the cross, one of the last things he said in Matthew chapter 27, verses 46, he said, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Okay, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So many pastors and scholars have looked at this and probably done too much speculation on this verse over the years, and I've probably been guilty of it too. But what's fascinating about this verse, folks, is what's in the ninth hour is our ninth sign of the 12 days of Christmas and 12 signs of Jesus. But here's what I really want to focus on in the fascinating events of this ninth sign. And they weren't the first time these words were used. These words were actually prophesied a millennial before Jesus was born. Seven generations, in fact, before King David. You see that picture of uh, King David there. And in Psalms chapter 22, there are multiple, multiple signs of Jesus. In fact, someday I'm probably going to do a, a, a sermon series on this because I've been fascinating about that. In fact, we talked about it last week at our men's Bible study that we do every week. But there are two major signs when you look in Psalms chapter 22. One, the first one that we're going to cover today is one of suffering. The second one is really one of resurrection and victory. Now, King David begins Psalms 22 with this most agonizing cry in human history, what you saw Jesus say in the book of Matthew, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, exactly the words that Jesus took to his lips right before he died in the depths of suffering on the cross. And I think this is fascinating. Okay, because it's the same, exa same exact words. So Jesus' suffering was unique at that point. He offered up himself of the sins of people. And we have seen this, this, this cry as unique to Jesus. But there's where the speculation of Psalms 22 comes in. Because some will argue that, that we, we were trying to, Jesus was not trying to invent or interpret things here. But here's what I want you to understand. Jesus is suffering. And David is praying a prayer that's prophetic. Do you understand that? He's quoting Psalms. Jesus is, 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 and the question becomes, is Jesus quoting Psalms 22, verse 1? Now, these words were first uttered by King David when he is speaking for, and at the time, King David was the king of the Jews. He was the king of Israel, and he was speaking for all of God's people. And I think we need to reflect on these words and the whole Psalms is how they relate to Christ and all his people really to uh, fully understand it. 
The sign, I believe, is the Holy Spirit conveying to us, here is the sufferings of Christ. Once you look at this, as you see that beautiful sign, if you see that uh, when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see what's amazing about this is the Psalms begins a section dominated by a theme of suffering with agonizing prayer, a prayer of suffering. When you see that, David is expressing in the first place his own experience of feeling abandoned by God. Now, I want to do another deep dive in here as you look at the picture there. When he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? and from the words of my groaning. I want you to let that sink in. Because here's the deal, David feels abandoned here. And so did Jesus. But I want you to look at verse two. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And the night season, I am not silent. He really, this whole idea of being abandoned. And here's what I think. I don't think that, I never ever thought that Jesus, uh, some, some people will argue maybe that God abandoned Jesus for a very short time. I don't think he ever did, okay? I don't think he ever abandoned him. I think he answered his prayer, is what I think. And I think you're seeing this with also with David. David's at a, at a time in his life where he has to make this prayer. And here's what I want to tell you. We all know that life can be extremely hard. It's one of suffering. And I want you guys to understand that today. Your life may be hard. You see, Jesus never promised us a nice, soft landing in heaven. Sometimes we wish he did, but he didn't. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Sometimes the, the, the life is put, we're put under intense pressure. We, have, we just want to melt away or sink into the oblivion and come out the, and, 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 and rather than face the next challenge in our lives. And for the Christian life, it could be made worse sometimes because I know that you may, might feel at times that God has left you or maybe he's abandoned you because you have a diagnosis of cancer or you have something, a relationship problem or somebody's moved into your life that you don't like and you think, if, if God really loved me, why wouldn't he make this hurt stop? Why would God take this pain? It may be a loss of a loved one. It may be heartache, the fear, the uncertainty about a future. You see, we're going to have suffering. And this is what David is going through. And this is why it's so prophetic to look at Psalms 22, because he gives us a vision uh, in, in, of what his suffering is in the first uh, 21 verses of this chapter. The only real answer to those questions or any understanding of suffering in trials and tribulations are truly found in the Word of God. And when the sufferings are in the Psalms, often the we just see his David's soul just burning there. Now, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, what I believe is David poured out his heart before God in the midst of a fiery test. Psalms 22 is an incredible sign of Jesus. The Psalm of David is one of the most helpful because Jesus came to relieve our suffering. Do you understand that? So David has given us this, 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 this description of we see of the crucifixion. And when he starts out with the cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Immediately, he makes the anguish of David very real in our minds. He's given us a sign. I know that you're hurting, but I'm going to be here to rescue you. Even David, the man after God's own heart, felt forsaken by God. And here's what I want to challenge you to do this week. This, in this, uh, this beautiful Christmas week, I want to challenge you this week to do a deep dive into the Psalms 22 and let the Bible come alive. Let, him, let it come alive, and you're going to see, and I let the Holy Spirit speak to you, how comfortable to know that even the best of us, like David, can feel this way. He felt surrounded by his enemy. He felt his bones were out of joint. His heart was melting like wax, and yet he had a feeling of abandonment by God and his heart ached. How could you, God? How could you, God? I've been, you've been my refuge. You've been my strength. Now you leave me in the loan of the hour of the most need. Sometimes you feel that way. You see the man sitting on the bench in the barn. The depth of David's pain was only outmatched by the height of the trust and the goodness of God. You see, guys, throughout the Psalms, you're going to see David pours out a cry of anguish. And he immediately responds with, yet you, a statement of trust 
and God's goodness and power. For David and for the believer like you and me, we're going to have some bad weeks. And we're going to have some great troubles. But we also must take enormous trust. The prophetic prayer that we see in David in Psalms 22, yeah, it's going to be answered. Answered on the cross. The night sign of Jesus in the ninth hour, I will say it, that is the great sign of the Old Testament, that Jesus Christ is coming to take away our sufferings. And that night, and that is the night sign today. God bless you. Go bold and have a very Merry Christmas.